um, for inviting me and thank you for all the work that's gone into the conference so far. I'm going to talk about a project I did two years ago, um, about the project for Janet Mendelssohn, and um, I've just got a copy of the catalogue, uh, which I can't leave out because there's so few copies left. And I just wanted to show you um, a picture of Janet because there's not one on the slideshow, um, so we know who we're talking about. Um, the story of Janet Mendelssohn and her Birmingham photographs are a narrative of a place, a period, and the making of the work. It is the story of a young woman from one of the great centres of learning and privilege in the USA, entering into a relationship with another young woman who was born and brought up in one of the most impoverished areas of Britain at a time of enormous social change. The story of Janet and Kathleen and the archive they made together is an enthralling one. Janet Mendelssohn was born in 1943 in Washington in the US. She studied social relations at Radcliffe College, the Women's College of Harvard University in 1966, and in 1967, traveled to the UK to study at the Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies at Birmingham University. By the time she traveled to Birmingham, she had already become interested in documentary photography. Mendelssohn's Birmingham work engaged, passionate, and inquiring was as much a project of Radcliffe College, with its focus on women, gender and society, and its remarkable alumni, who included Helen Keller, Adrian Rich, and Betty Friedan, as it was of the burgeoning humanist documentary photography of the US and Europe in the 1950s and 60s. For Mendelssohn, photography was social investigation, rather than either art or first photojournalism. Part of our interest in this Fast Forward conference is in the way the bodies of photographic work comes to light, often unknown for many years. These archives are fragile, often rediscovered by accident or in the course of other researches. Janet Mendelssohn took her photographs with her when she left Birmingham in 1968 to spend a year at the Royal College of Art in London, and from there she journeyed back to the US. Her work was located in the context of Birmingham by the cultural historians Kieran Connell and Matthew Hilton, who were researching the history of the Centre for Contemporary Cultural Studies, a hugely influential focus for the study of popular culture, led by radical cultural theorist Stuart Hall. Hall's voice was to become an important one in photography when he noted that, quote, the camera provides a sharp focus on what the image is manifestly about, the subject centred in the foreground of the frame. The image is supplemented in dramatic, visual and emotional impact by the ways it has been handled, its positioning, cutting and framing. These practices of representation foreground certain aspects, marginalize others. They establish a hierarchy of meanings. But can they always be read from their margins, for their backgrounds? Who are these people? What is their social background, their class, racial and gender position? And do these apparently incidental things matter? What are they doing when, with whom, what are they wearing? What do the expressions on their faces and their body language tell us about how life is being lived and experienced? The still image arrests the flow of time, freezes the event, allowing us to look longer, to get more out of it. What signifies is not the photographic text in isolation, but the way that it is caught up in a network of chains of signification that overprint it. It's inscription into the currency of other discourses which bring out different <coughs> meanings. Its meaning can only be completed by the ways that we interrogate it. Um, end of quote. We don't know if Hall, Hall and Mendelssohn discuss photography because this is a very obscure history which is only just now being excavated. But photography was almost certainly regarded with respect at the centre, which was seen as one of the most radical and progressive research centres of its time and whose influence lives on to this day, especially that of Stuart Hall. Connell and Hilton came across Janet's work in illustrated reports published by the Centre in the 60s and were intrigued by its quality and content. After some detective work, they contacted her in the US where she had worked as a film producer for many years and she subsequently donated her sizable archive of prints to the Cadbury Research Centre at Birmingham University in 2014. When Connell and um, Hilton found this material, they were, they were somewhat at a loss how they would get it out into the world. And I think that's often a very interesting question when one finds an archive. How does one, after that initial excitement has sort of died down, there's always the question about how do we actually present this? How do we make it a part of things? 
And what they did was very interesting. They put together a small local show in the area where the photographs were taken, where all of these photographs were taken, and um, in a way tested the water in what I think was a very interesting, interesting way of bringing these photographs back into the community. But later in 1916, they took the archive in onto a, a kind of different level when they had a more substantial exhibition with a catalogue at the Icon Gallery in Birmingham. And this, this brought the photographs to the attention of not only the art going um, public in Birmingham, but uh, also to major critical attention um, from papers in London. And it was reviewed in many different papers because it struck a very particular chord at that time. Um, and every, all papers love a story, and all papers love the idea of things that are hidden and we discovered. It's like a kind of fairy story. Um, this is where I came into the story, as Colin Hilton commissioned me to write an essay on the photographic context for Janet's work, because they already knew a lot about the Centre for Cultural Studies, but they weren't so aware of how her work fitted in or didn't fit in. Um, the photographs in the Icon exhibition and in the catalogue were made almost entirely in Monsal Heath, in inner city Birmingham, although Janet did do work elsewhere in Birmingham, this was seen as a, a very interesting focus for the city. Bolson Heath is very well known in Birmingham for reasons that I'm going to explain. Um, originally a sedate and elegant 19th century middle class suburb, by the 1960s Bolson Heath, with the main Varna Road at its centre, which was the place where Janet came to work, had become Birmingham's major red light district and the centre for migration from South Asia. The once elegant houses fell into decay and were subdivided into rooming houses and shabby flats. Corner shops, pubs and cafes formed the social hubs of the community and life on the streets was hectic and crowded and sometimes violent. The combination of vitality and cheapness meant that for a time, Walsall Heath became a draw both for Birmingham's artistic bohemia and for students, as well as a centre for prostitution. It was a highly visible example of post-war British society in transition, all these photographs are of Bolsall Heath, um, with a complex mix of groups, new populations engaging with the more traditional. All this must have been great, of great interest to Mendelssohn, who'd come from Radcliffe, from this great intellectual hub in, uh, on the east coast of America to study this, this society, this post-war society in flux. Janet Mendelssohn was very much a US photographer bringing the methodology of the new US documentaries to, documentaries to 1960s Britain. We don't know how she learned to take photographs. She was certainly very skilled. She was very friendly with the, with the photographer Susan Mycellus. So maybe some, some of that skill would come through there, but uh, we, we have no information about that. But possibly that will come to light as the research project continues. Although in her Birmingham work, the traces of Walker Evans, Eugene Smith, and Dorothy Alang can all be seen, the intense focus of her study on a particular locale and its empathetic nature is much closer to the work of Bruce Davidson, Danny Lyons, and Mary Clark. It is tempting to conjecture that she had also, when she came to Britain, seen photographer Roger Main's study of Sidham Street in West London, photographed between 1958 and 1961, or had even come across the work of Photographer Nick Hedges, whose powerful photographs of deprivation and poor housing conditions in the Bolsall Heath area of Birmingham were commissioned by the housing charity Shelter in the late 1960s, coinciding with the release of Ken Loach's TV drama about homelessness, Kathy Come Home, in 1966. Hedges' work was dramatic and persuasive and as the driver of a dynamic shelter campaign had a great public impact. And as I said earlier, we don't Janet isn't able to remember anything of her time um, in Britain, unfortunately. So all this evidence is having to be kind of pieced together as the years go by by different researchers. So really this project is, is absolutely at, at its beginning, which in a way makes it quite exciting because then one can kind of fantasise, uh, which one might not be able to do later on. Um, Mendelssohn is not able to remember her time in Birmingham, but there are other residents whose memories have been preserved. In the archives of the Mass Observation Collection at the University of Sussex are the diaries of art student and trainee teacher Kate Paul, who moved to Birmingham at the end of the 1950s and lived in a flat on Varna Road in the centre of Bolsall Heath. In her diary she observed, the people who live on this street live on their sexual interests and fear and fear. 
Men in cars curb crawl and raise their fingers, leaning forward, eager, their faces drawn with lust. I hate these, not the street walkers. It's really terrible in the street. They have cockfighting and stabbings, and the police come up here in twos on motorbikes. At night, it's really grim, men melting into doorways, beckoning. The endless crawl of cars, the slamming of doors, the women's shrill voices, close quote. As a loci for bohemianism, Varna Road, with its large houses, cheap space, and changing communities, also became attractive. The British surrealist Conroy Maddox lived in Varna Road, at the centre of what has been called the Balsall Heath Bohemia, after the end of World War II until the 1950s, and hosted a number of gatherings there, with, quote, guests including local children, poets, communist intellectuals, post-war Caribbean immigrants, and women in gypsy dress, or as nuns. On Varna Road, Janet met Kathleen, and that's not her real name, who became her main subject and collaborator. Kathleen crops up in a lot of these photographs, um, especially the ones at the beginning. Um, Kathleen was a young woman, a sex worker, and a mother living and working on Varna Road in Bal Balsall Heath. Janet and Kathleen were the same age as each other and even looked surprisingly similar. Though separated by upbringing, nationality, and circumstance, they developed a friendship, and Mendelssohn was welcomed into Kathleen's family. I don't want to be naive about this, but we have no information about how she was welcomed into the family, whether money changed hands, or we have no information about that, so I wouldn't want to kind of glorify this friendship, but certainly there was a connection. Um, Janet also made sets of interviews with the people she photographed, which have been preserved. Her sense of location was precise as she mapped out a very small area in which to base her main photography, Varna Road, the Cashmere Coffee Bar, Kathleen's Home, Shops and Street Life. At the heart of Mendelssohn's <coughs> Berlin work are her photographs of Kathleen and her family at home. <coughs> Janet's photographs are a rich, poetic, intimate, collaborative, shot in available light, the gloomy, dishevelled interiors of Kathleen's room assume a kind of grandeur, with Kathleen as a central figure. These are photographs which appear to be full of warmth and compassion, photographs made by one young woman about another young woman's life. There seems to be a real connection here. Outside, on the street, in the cafe, outside the pub, Mendelssohn's photograph is an observation of life in Balsall Heath as reflected through Kathleen and her circle. Janet accompanies Kathleen as she chats with friends on street corners, pushes her pram and visits the laundrette. She photographed the broken down bed where Kathleen took her clients. She observes Kathleen with her children and photographs of great poignancy. Bringing Janet Mendelssohn's photographs into the public arena after a gap of almost half a century is an important addition to British photographic history. Questions hang over these photographs and the interpretation of them. Their journey from public archive to public private archive to public exhibition will mean that meaning will be inscribed upon the work and responses will come from both the local community, from photo historians, and from the larger public. We will want to know more about why Janet Mendelssohn made these photographs, how she created and managed complex relationships with places and people, and why photography played such a brief, if spectacular, part in her creative career. Evidence to sum up, evidence suggests that Mendelssohn's Birmingham photographs were exhibited only once after she returned to the States in the 1970s. It is impossible to say what, if any, ambitions Mendelssohn may have had for the photographs. She went on to work as a film producer rather than either um, re-entering academia or as a photographer. And uh, she's unable to remember her time in Birmingham. Um, the places for Janet Mendelssohn photographed in Balsall Heath are long gone, their fates sealed by slum clearance in the 1970s. The cafes, the shops, the street corners where Kathleen and her friends gathered around her enormous pram are now just memories preserved in photographs or in oral histories or passed down in reminiscences by the elderly. But looking at these photographs quietly, why can one can imagine and almost begin to hear the life that imbues them? The clamour of the cafe, the medley of accents and intonations, the voices of children, the violence and the sweetness. The subject matter of Mendelssohn's family is harsh, as are the interviews which she made with her subjects while making the photographs. But Mendelssohn is an observer rather than a critic. In her photographs, the narrative is fragmentary, almost casual, with gaps and absences. 
Mendelssohn's own voice is missing from this narrative. She is unable to tell us about her relationship with Kathleen and her friends, or what she learned at the Centre of Contemporary Cultural Studies, or why indeed she gave up photography. But it is common, especially among women photographers from the 1930s to the 1960s in Britain, to have had very brief careers in photography, unless they were sustained by studio practice or commercial work. As more researchers work on this collection, more clues will be found which will inform us about the making of this remarkable body of photography from Britain in the 60s. Working on the Janet, Janet Mendelssohn archive with only the prints in the archive and no personal documentation was challenging. Many questions remain. We can only conjecture about Janet's relationship with Kathleen, observer, friend, client, or all three. We know nothing about Kathleen's reasons for taking part in what was a relatively substantial documentary project, and we have few clear, clear ideas about Janet's methodology. That this complete archive has survived and is now back just a few miles from the place where it was made is remarkable. Thank you.